All right, good morning. It's uh, welcome. This is Wednesday, September 9th. Uh, we're going to be going from 8 o'clock till 9.30. And let's get the disclaimer out of the way. Trade in foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree not of leverage... Not on the screen, can... the disclaimer, Al. Sorry. Oh, you're not seeing it? You're not nope. seeing it? Ooh. No, we don't see your screen, Al, but your recording's on, which is good. <laughs> okay, well, let me uh, go. <laughs> That's an improvement. <laughs> I thought I had my screen shared. Okay, here we go. Now we go. Now we got it. That's why things are going. Okay. Well, there good morning, go. everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, the trading, this the disclaimer is we always do every morning. Trading in the foreign exchange or margin carries a high level of risk. It may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before deciding to invest in foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with the foreign exchange trading. Seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. And this is Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be going from 8 till 9.30. And then we have another session tonight at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we'll go from about 9.30 to about 11 tonight, assuming uh, we have a group enough to be here to do that. This live trading room is for educational purposes only. No financial advice or recommendations will be provided. Any trades taken during this live session is not a recommendation or suggestion that you should also do the same. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Do not trade money you cannot afford to lose. And before trading live, Always operate with a written trade plan that identifies rules for entries, exits, targets, and risk management. Now we have that out of the way. And right now it is, uh, I'm gonna go to the, change my screen here. And we have uh, our, four, our uh, Forex factory. These are, this is September 9th, and we're showing that we have some red folder news at 10 o'clock with the Canadian dollar. So we're going to be keep that in the back of our minds if we get any uh, U.S. CAD alerts. So we'll make sure we understand that. Remember that there's an alert uh, coming up. At, there's some sort of news coming up at 10 o'clock. And looking back at what we had for over the night, uh, we have oh we have a U.S. CAD at 7 o'clock. We had with U.S. CAD at 7. We have an Aussie U.S. at 7 o'clock. And so let's go to the – and we had a U.S. Swiss at uh, 645. Let's take a look at the cats. Let's, see, let's take a quick look at the Aussie, see where we're at with the Aussie. And right now the Aussie is still in, inside the wedge. I had a little bit of a breakout down here. Here is the alert at seven o'clock. And I drew this, again, I draw these on a 15 minute chart. And what I did with this one, I have, let me take this one off here. This is where I drew the original wedge. The ones that, with the orange, uh, border, that's the where the alert was. And I usually make them fairly, you know, I usually take the significant pivot highs, pivot lows, try and get my three point hit. Here's my anchor, my B is the anchor. Here's the intermediate hit. Here's the, another hit just before the alert. That gives, that validates this trend line. And then I have, it was an ascending wedge. So I start with my A down below, bring it up to the next pivot high D. And now we're still waiting on that third hit on the AC line. So right now, the top line has been validated as being a strong support, and we're looking at possibly uh, for a retest of the bottom line. In between, I'll go to the five-minute chart, and we'll, and we'll just tweak up these lines to make sure that these points are as close to that as we can. And we're seeing we had a nice strong move up here from where the CD line is, and we have a secondary wedge cut developing right in this area which is right where the alert was. So I'm going to draw a secondary wedge. Uh, and actually, basically what we're looking at is we're seeing a where the D is, we have a hit, a hit, and this is now starting to break out of the top of that. So I'm going to, it was an ascending wedge again, so I'm gonna start low to high to the D, bring it down to, now this is past where the alert was, so and then I'm just tuck that in right here and I'm gonna make this yellow. So that's knowing that's where my secondary alert was. And now we're going to see if it's going to break out of the top. And it's just about ready to be doing that right now. I'm going to see where my B is. Here's my, my the main wedge B. Here's my secondary B. 
and we're looking to see if it's going to break and close inside this area where I had a, well, I want to say a higher close. So here's a blue candle that closed inside the wedge. This is the highest one. I'm, no, this is the highest blue candle inside the wedge. So I'm going to see a close outside the wedge and inside where that, uh, I'm going to see a higher high is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to draw my zone from here's the A, I'm gonna bring it over here. I'm gonna tuck this on down to, I'm gonna put it under the top of the B. I'm gonna see this enclose but outside the wedge, which is where the B is. I'm gonna see it close inside this zone. And I'm gonna tuck this in over here. Here's where the, this was the highest high where reference to where the alert was. If you can see this, uh, this is on a five minute chart. You can see that this was actually where the B should be over here. Tuck that in. This is the, I want to see it be able to break and close inside this zone right here. And that's, and we'll see how many pips away that is. That is right now, that is at 72.45. And then the break of the zone would be at 72.40. This is about five pip zone right in here. So that's a, uh, Probably a little bit bigger than what we usually have, but that's just the way it's kind of panned out here. Let me just pull this back down again. As this as this uh, wedge, as as the time goes by and as the candles click off, you see this wedge is gradually sloping down, and this one's still still being still being valid. So we're not going to be too anxious to take this trade until it breaks out of the top of that. This thing has a lot of potential to just reverse and come back down because this see this air this one down here has not been tested yet. So I'm just gonna be kind of slow in taking this trade at all. I do want to see a break and close inside this so uh, I like to get at least two pips and see where the, where are we at here. Off the B, that's 41, 43. I'm gonna say I want to see a close inside that zone there. I want to say at least a two pip uh, zone break. Hey, good morning, Al. I had some problems uh, signing in this morning. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that happens. So, all right. Well, good, welcome, Matt. All right. Now we're Hi. looking at the Aussie US. We had the wedge alert at seven o'clock, and we had a, I drew the bigger wedge, and we have a secondary wedge, which now is still trying to break out of the top here. All the moving averages are in the right direction on the five minute. We did get a little bit of a higher close. This five minute candle did close a little bit higher than where this blue candle area is, where the B is. So it's right at it right now. So I'm gonna see it. I don't I, like I this long. It. No, I don't, I'm not very fond of this one either. Um, no, so, I don't uh, like it long. Yeah, you know, and a couple of reasons. Uh, I don't know what, what your view is on this, but one reason is we have the three hits. We have several hits on this upper trend line. Nothing but on the, the lower bottom. one, we still haven't had our third hit. So I think this thing could come down, test this before it goes long or breaks it to the bottom. It might, but it could just keep on going down. Um, yeah. There's, it's just the movement of the of the pair, even on the 30 minute, it's a really aggressive move down, like on the higher time frames. And now we're we're challenging uh, a different. A totally different level so it could it could come down to um, 7150 yeah this i think you're talking about this move right here on this uh yeah that's you know, a very that's a very that's very, a very strong aggressive move, move. very yeah, strong and this, and this is more of the wedge you have the this is like the wedge at the end of the move exactly where it, where it could actually do one of these where it comes down retraces and it comes then just totally falls apart yeah, it could be an ABC correction, or it could be something like it's. Yeah. There's, it, it's, it just looks too strong uh, of a move to be a reversal, like um, like a turnaround point. Looks like more of a continuation pullback. It, it does to me. Yeah, it does to me. But I'm not going to put all my eggs in that basket because I could be totally wrong. Yeah, but I do. Uh, uh, like that more as a continuation than a yeah. reversal. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, we had a Swiss trade earlier today, and uh, what was interesting about this one 
was yesterday we had this nice move here yesterday. This was actually a wedge that was alerted yesterday. This is back in on uh, three o'clock yesterday afternoon. Yeah. And and what I did was I drew, I took my B and C and I took my Baker Fibonacci tool, and I went from from the B down to the D, and that's where I got these uh, supply and demand zones right here. So I had that already drawn out this morning, and then we got another alert this morning at six forty-five. And, oh, within it. But all hmm. within it. And what's, what's interesting is I had this all drawn out. And, so, and yesterday I told myself, if I get, because I drew this out way back here at you know, around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And I said, if it comes up here and gives, and if it closes inside that area, I'm not going to take it long, but I'm going to take it short. Well, uh, it happened this morning. And when it went up there, it went up into that little enter on close zone. And but rather than taking short, because I was just wasn't thinking, I took it short. I took it long, and I got stopped out. So that helps to validate when you get these. When you can find these, even though this is a wedge from yesterday, it's still valid, and the range is still valid. So uh, this is a range that's been playing, and so this this could very well be the uh, target area from if you had taken it short here, knowing that you're right in a supply zone that I didn't. Uh, it, it never even looked back to uh, give, give, get me profitable at all. So that was a stop out this morning. But you have to keep in mind where these zones are. Uh, even when you get these alerts uh, from subsequent days, sometimes they're still valid uh, the next day. So that's uh, so anyway, I'm not trading this one anymore uh, today. And then we had a U.S. CAD trade at... Let's try to see what the U.S. CAD has over here. Give you a CAD. And we're going to go to a, this was at 7 o'clock as well, I believe, with a U.S. CAD descending wedge on the U.S. CAD. And I put, as I pointed out, we have news at, at 10 o'clock with the CAD. So we want to be very careful about that. Uh, in fact, we're going to mark, I'm going to mark 10 o'clock on the chart so I know to, be aware that it, I'm going to go at 9.45. That's a little too wicky for me. Yeah, just just from the just from the size of those wicks, eh? You see some of those uh, wicks are like five and six pips long. Let's make this one red alert area. And make this one red just so we know that that's a area for news. news okay so let's take a look at this one here it was descending and come over here it was at seven o'clock i'll just draw it out and see what we have there's seven o'clock i think this is our normal uh let's see which alert here we go there we go actually i had one here for news Oh, that's there we go. That's the news one. Well, that's descending wedge. Yeah, descending wedge. So this is here's our move down, and we have the alert. So I'm looking at this. It's a nice down. wedge, though. It is an actually pretty nice wedge. So we're going to draw this one out. It was descending, so yeah. we're going to take it. I'm going to take it from here to here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and include this candle where the wedge alert was, because that one's already finished, and so we can use that since it's finished. And then we're looking at pretty much. This one right here. I'm going to make this my main my main color. So I'm going to make this the higher time frame orange, and we're going to see what it looks like on a smaller time frame. Now, just by looking at this, this may have already this is an, already an hour and fifteen minutes old. So this may have already played out. But I would be looking at my area to enter. I'm going to go for the D to the B. And I'm going to see how that looks uh, with that. So this is the area I want to see it close inside of. Uh, now, I'm not done drawing that yet, but I'm going to go over to my five-minute chart and see if we can tweak up some of these lines a little bit so I can tuck that one in over here. We can tuck this one, make sure we got the bottom of this, which is right there. Tuck this into the bottom. And like I said, I want to see a close inside this. And it did close inside the zone. 
and actually it did close right at the bottom of where this B is. Coming back, retesting the wedge, all of our moving averages in this particular case are in the correct direction. We have the uh, 62, 13, and five over here. Came up, it's coming up into the wedge. It's not closed yet on the five minute. Come over to our one minute chart and see what that's looking like. Everything else is still the same. And let's see here, we have, here was the alert, here was the high. It broke the high up here. Took my A in over, took my A in tighter. Let's draw our zone at the top and see where this thing came into play. See if that would have kept us out of harm's way if we had this thing drawn before. I'd be back over in here like this. And we're gonna tuck this in right at the top of where the C is. Let's see, the C was, hmm. I probably would have had to go with, well, we didn't have our third hit. We didn't have our, we don't have our three hits here. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this. And that's probably the second hit, that's a high. So we have two hot pivot highs. We have a lower high, have a low, a high, a higher low, a lower high. So right now everything's still consolidating. Here's the third hit. So if we take, we can take this. Here's our B. Here's our here's our anchor. Here's our first hit. We had another hit here. So right now that validates this trend line. And now we can use this from here <clears throat> to here. And I want to see a close in between here, close below, came back up, retested, and now it looks like it's trying to break down again. Everything's in the right direction. This is the retest of the wedge. And now we have another trend that we're looking at developing from up here. Hmm. So here, I'm going to make this one a different color here just to, and so we had the break. Now the question is, where's our, where would our target be? So this was, this one really took almost an hour to uh, seven o'clock to, it's just breaking out down here right now at around an hour and 15 minutes later. Now the question is, is there enough room for a target? And you pretty much have to go to the higher time frame. I'm not. In, I'm not going to probably take this. We probably won't get. I probably won't get this thing drawn out enough time to be able to take it. But over here, you look. Come over here. Here's the low. Here's where our B was. Come over here and see where the wicks are. So right here, this we have some buyers in this area. So the target, if this thing breaks, the target's going to be somewhere probably down in this area right here. So I'm going to draw that as a supply zone or demand zone. Here's the wick. Here's the next, uh, so here's the next fresh area where we have demand, where we came up, it came down, retested this area, the nice strong candle coming up, came up higher, came down, retested this area. Here was the origin of the move. So I'm going to take this and make this our demand zone. And I'm gonna make another one because we have another one right below it. Because this is where the, or this is pretty much where the origin of this move came from right in here. Actually, it's probably even a little bit lower still, but this is, these are the next areas where this thing would have to come through in order to, I'll just take this one off. Aussie just broke its wedge. Did it? To the upside? Which, yep. which way did it break? To the upside. It's in the entry zone now. Okay. Um, how's our strength on the Aussie here? Let's see. Aussie's pretty strong, but I don't know. It's just, uh, hmm. let's see here. It still has some room to the upside. It's just nice, big, strong, with a strong move up. Yeah, that's that's a 10 pip, five minute candle, is it? So No, it's probably C744 to, that's five pip, one minute candle. Oh, wow. Yeah, even bigger. Let's we'll see well, what see happens. How, Let's see, yeah, let's see how this thing goes out. Let's uh, get this thing over on the. This could be a nice. I don't know. There's the close in between. 
Yeah. And where's our target zone area B? That's uh, 44 to Brooks. So it's 44 pip uh, wedge there, still in the zone. Mm. This thing's playing with us today. Let's see what the 30 minute looks like. See what target the area is. Yeah, we'll see. Here's the target what, area right up in here. 72.48? Is that what you're saying? Uh, right up in this area. 72.48, 72.49? Uh, right now I've got about 72.59 here. Oh, okay. I'm way up there. Yeah. This one a 15 minute. Yeah. I think it's going to hit 72.49 and then turn around. We do have a lot of wicks. Here's the top of this strong candle here. Here's some wicks. This could be the top of the move up here uh, to 48, 49 here, just like what you're saying. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where I B. think if it's going to. If it can break through that B, through the B zone, if it can break through the top of this, then this look like it's uh, nonstop up till we get up to this area. So we do have some strength here. Uh, see, that's a 15 minute chart. Got some basing going on. This is all the US dollar. Mm. All the moving averages are in the correct direction. Green, yellow, orange. I think it still has some room to the upside. It may have a little bit of a pullback here. Let's see how far this pulls back. I'd like to see these come down a little bit before I take it long. All of our RSIs are in the correct direction. Our Aussie is strong by four on all three time frames. And we've had, we did have the close inside the zone, which is good. And so I'm going to put a buy stop in right up in here to 72.44. Maybe 2.45, we put it up there. Like this, take this, seven pips, here you go. Not in the trade yet. We're still waiting for it to come back up and retest up here. It's coming down, retesting the bottom of the wedge, retesting the yellow. Yeah, let's see, right now that looks not too bad. If you see this RSI come down and hook down here, that might be a time to go try and take it long. And if it hooks, it may already be, get me in this trade at this point. If not, if it doesn't, if this thing is a fake out, then I should never get filled. And my stop target's down below the uh, the bottom of the wedge. Nice strong move up, retesting the wedge. Where's our fib line? We have, do we have a fib line anywhere close? We have a green fib line here. We have a red one up here. Uh, so that should be our seven pip range, 46 to 39. That's our seven pip range. So it's right in between these two. Yeah, and, then the target uh, would be, and the target would be up here at the, uh, at the blue one. Yeah, it's checking the, uh, the top of that wedge. So that's a good sign. It went right down to the pip and took off. You see how it came up and it tagged it and came up again and tagged the top. That was, yeah, that was really good. I'm gonna, I'm in the trade. I'm, I entered it long on this buy stop. My target's gonna be up here. The blue line is gonna be my target. We have a lot of momentum. We have some strength here. The odds are still showing strong on the RCS. And we have a supply zone or demand zone up in here. Actually, this should be. Red, supply, supply, supply. Here we go. That'd be the more of the ultimate target right now. I'm just looking for the seven pip target up here. And we do have some, uh, looks like we do have some strength on the whole moving averages. All the whole moving averages are green. 
for above all of our moving averages on all three time frames came up. They closed inside the enter to sell zone or enter to close enter on the close. Strong move up, it's spacing is still maintaining, it's basically just going sideways right now, just spacing. And the more it goes, more it goes sideways, the more likely it is it's gonna break out to the upside. The longer it goes this way, the higher it's gonna go up this way. Generally speaking, not always, nothing's always on this game, in this game. Let's go to our five minute chart and just uh, so we don't get ourselves too wrapped around the, move that out of the way. We did have the five minute close. We have an inside, lower inside uh, engulfing candle. The blue candle is engulfing this red candle. So it's an inside and with a strong move to the outside. So right now it's just basing inside up here. It's actually drawing a little, a small little mini wedge right in this area on this five minute. Trend lines, both these trend lines are still holding. We had the break. We'll see where it takes us. Get some fib lines up here, some target zones. Here's the green target zone. And we had the, this is the uh, supply demand zone up here. We have another blue. We have the blue, green, red, and then we have the next blue one on up here. So this thing, on a five minute reference, this thing could go quite a ways actually. And we'll see what it can give us. So I haven't made my, my spread yet. We have a 1.5 uh, pip spread on this on this pair. And we'll wait and see. Right now we keep our hands in our pockets and just watch. We have another sip of coffee. Yeah, coffee would be good right, right about now. You can see that right here, you have a little bit of a rally, basing, rally, basing. It's got a little bit of a, on the one minute, these are like little, small little mini wedges. A little pulls up, small pullback, higher high, pullback. <clears throat> they could do that for a couple more rallies, a couple more uh, five minute candle series. Right now we're just waiting to see. Well, I like how the, how the moving averages are starting to spread a bit. Yeah, that's always a good sign when they start Five getting a little bit distance. One minute, it's, yeah, I don't know. We had the crossover way down here at the right now, uh, where you had the moving averages crossed inside this, this wedge area. We had the alert. Moving averages crossed, you had to close above, close above this candle, this series of blue candles. And right now, it's making higher closes. As long as it keeps making higher closes, we can probably stay in this uh, trade. Yep, and on the RCA, um, <clears throat> on the RCS, we there's still a spread of four. Yep. Five on the other time frame. Yeah, five on the five minute. That's a, that's a nice. That's comfortable. And there's enough room to the 62 moving average. It's also nice. Wait and see. Yep. I like the fact we had to close above the B, the blue, the, the, we have a close up out of the B into the zone and it was higher than these other, so it's getting higher closes. So now we have a low, a high, higher low. Now we have a higher high. Pullback would be hopefully a uh, higher low again and another high and just keeps on ratcheting up until we get to our target. I think it might be taken off now. It's trying to it's trying to get a little momentum build up here.
Let's see how this looks under one minute. We'll get all three time frames up here. We'll keep an eye on it. I'm going to take this uh, one off of unsync this so we can see our 15 minute chart a little bit clearer. We don't want to see a close below this uh, 13 moving average on the one minute or on any of them for that matter, but primarily on the on the one minute. I don't want to see these cross, these two cross. And remember we said that the top of this was uh, where the top where the B was. So it's got to break through that. If we can get a close above that, we should be up, up and running up into there. Nice little basing. If we draw from the this move up here, we just draw a straight Fibonacci retracement line from the bottom, from where this started up to here. Pulls back to 38%, which is right about there. So our target should be right up in this area, right about in could have a little struggle right through here. And I would be looking at uh, very possibly, I'm going to take the middle of this, of this area right in here. Yeah, I'm already out with seven pips. You already got your seven? You, got it. you must have gotten early on that one. I'm barely break even on this. Well, I did, but it was by accident. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can't take credit for accidents. No. Yeah, that almost doesn't count. Come on. <laughs> well, I had two entries by accident because I wanted to enter on my other counts and I was still on the same one. Oh boy, manual errors. I guess we all yeah. do them. Yeah, at least you didn't take the other the other side of the trade. Or the wrong player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that uh, doesn't usually work out well. I was having a hard time breaking through the top of this, uh, where this uh, is over here where the B is, is where you're seeing the top of this. Uh, this is at the top of the B. I like to get a close above where this I'd like to see a close above this candle, right? This big blue candle right there. I like to see a close above that. We need a 15 minute close. And we have another, where's our clock here? We have another 12 minutes before this candle is going to close. You see this one, this candle right here closed right where this one closed, where the B is. So we really didn't get the close outside of this on this 15 minute. Starting to have a little bit of a pullback here. All of our, our size are, we had this uh, one came up, it's hooked on the 15 minutes, so that's not helpful. This is not helpful either. This is a pullback. We'll see if this thing can hook, come back, and give us another run at this. Right now, we're still above all of our moving averages. Nice strong candle up here on the 15 minutes. So this could just be a nice little basing area coming in. Let's see where that uh, 
next five minute candle is going to close. It should be closing right about this 34, so 39 right in this area. We'll put our five minute candle marks in here so we know where our five minute, how soon our five minute candle is going to close. This one closed right here. This was the open, this little wick right here, that was the open of the five minute candle. It's came in, coming back. It hasn't closed below, and then just uh, we'll see if it can, the second half of this five minute period, if it can come up and re tag this. Five minute period moving average came down, it hooked before it crossed over the yellow one. So that's a good sign. We have the hook down here. It didn't get all the way down to the 89, so it didn't have a lot of, it had a little bit more strength or less weakness, I guess you could say. Still waiting for a significant close above this blue line right in here. It closed right at the uh, right at where the B area. This, so this is the top of where we drew our B. That's a little higher close right there. We'll see if the five minute can close in that as well. Still looking at our top profit targets right up in this area, heading up to the supply zone. Yeah, I just closed my other trade <clears throat> with five pips. I'm almost shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I've, got, I've got four pips uh, right now. I'm up four pips right now. Struggling to get five. And if I get five, yeah, I'll probably close out one of them. I think it won't get higher than seven to four seventy-seven. Oh, seven. 77 is way up there. That's way too high. I think I think it's seventy two fifty five and then it'll probably turn around, but we'll see. Seventy two four seventy seven. Oh. That's where where we where we got his resistance now a couple of times. Yeah. But so we know we've we made a higher happens. high, we have a higher low. You can't get a higher low till you get a higher high. So right now our here's our where our low is. So here's where we can actually be looking at putting our visual stop. It was down here when that made that high, came back, pulled back, made a new high, so now I can move it on up. I do have to mention now, I look at your screen, Al, there's almost one pip difference uh, from my trading view screen. That's a bit... Uh, you're probably using a different broker, I'm guessing. Yeah, probably. I think uh, FXCM. Yeah, we can't. I can't use FXCM uh, in over here in the U.S. So this is a this feed is often a Wanda account, a Wanda feed, which is still a little bit different than what my LCM FX feed is, but it's close enough to close enough for demonstration purposes. Any other comments from the from our everybody else in here? Anybody put a chat question in the chat if it's uh we can, Quiet always, room. can always turn your mics on as well. A you know, question answer box or the chat either one should work. Prefer the question answer if you have questions. And let's see where are we at here. How are we doing? Uh, still pulling back again. Struggling a little bit to get up to get that target zone. OK, 
came right up to that 1% area or that uh, retracement area that we drew out. It's struggling a little bit. I a hard time getting our five pips out of this one. Here's our supplies that we drew that we said if we broke this uh, blue blue box area here off that where the B was, that was going to be our next target zone. Let me draw it on the 15 minute chart. Here's the B. Actually, wait, it's the, this is the blue. This was the close of the, you know, we don't get, we haven't got the 15 minute close yet on this. We had a wick up, but we don't have the close outside of this blue zone. But once it can cross, close off of this, if we can get a close above where the B is, then we have this shot at this uh, other zone up here. Oh, that's, that B, that's the uh, 72477 I talked about. I posted. Uh, I've got 7248 is the top of the B. If I get a close above that, right now we just have a, a head fake basically outside of the B. It came up, went above it. We have this other area right in here. We have this little price point right here. That's also something we have to contend with. Once we get through that, there aren't a whole lot of wicks until we get all the way up to the top up here. So this is a key price point. I'm also seeing on the one minute a little bit of divergence, but if it's on one minute, it's not that strong, uh, correct? Correct. Did you say that yesterday? Okay. Yep, I did. So right now we have a little bit of a, let's see, I'm going to move this up here like that. We'll see if this 15 minute candle, it's going to close in about three more minutes. So we can get a close on this. Right now, this is a pretty much a neutral bar right now. We have a high, we have a low, and right now the close is going to be right about in the middle of this area. So there's still a lot of indecision. That's almost like going to be like a doji in here, depending on how this thing closes out. Let's see what five minutes, let's see what that looks like. Start, these charts are starting to look a little busy, aren't they? Still did not get the close in here on any, any not on the five minute. Let's see, we've got one on the one minute. We did get the close on the one minute. So far, we don't have any cross of the moving averages. So the moving at the yellow moving average is still in play and still good for a, we had a little wick down here, but it couldn't close below it. No, we do not. We, I can't move this because we, the, I moved this when this high made came back at a lower low, but now we have a lower high, so I can't move this yet. I have to wait till it breaks this high before I can move this. So right now, this is going to be our stop zone right here. If it closes under uh, the 13, I'll be happy that I closed out with five pips already. Yeah, if it closes below the 13 moving average, I'll be uh, thinking about exiting my trade with just a 
break even or maybe just a little bit of a small loss. Right now we're right now I'm still we're still hanging in up there. We're still positive on the trade. A lot depends on where you got your fill. You know what would help if it's your if it would be your birthday every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday was. Well, it is my birthday week, so that still counts. That's right. It's a birthday month. Yeah, we always have birthday weeks. In this, in this birthday South year. Birthday, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, birthday year. There you go. Every day is a birthday. <laughs> no, it's still that was a nice little pullback, and it's still. Uh, again, we're on a one-minute chart, so we have to. We have to understand that part. Let's go. Let's see where we at with our five-minute candle. I'm gonna move this over to. Let's see. Move this. So this is the. Let's see. Where's my time here? Eight forty-five. So this is the first minute of a five, new five minute candle. So this is, we're one minute into this candle, this five minute. We still have four minutes to go. And if you look at this one where the last five minutes, you can see that 39. So this thing's, it was slow and it, it so this was basically a, a bullish can, a, Bullish candle, it closed up high, started low, it closed up high. That's this blue one right here. And you can see the price action, how it's trading inside this five minute range. So our next five minute range is gonna be over here where it's gonna close at, the next one's gonna open at 850. And a lot of times you get the close, the, the, the low comes in first and then it goes up higher. In this case, it kind of came in the height, had a strong candle, went up a little bit higher, and now it's pulling back to test. As long as it stays inside this blue candle, as long as it doesn't break the bottom of this, just tighten up my stop a little bit. And again, these are visual stops, not hard stops. We still have 12 more minutes before this 15 minute candle goes. So we still have a little bit more time yet. So we still have to be patient. It's just looking at the US CAD, the Canadian has uh, built strength against the US again. It just kind of blew out of the bottom of that wedge. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. So we probably should, maybe should have hung on to that one. Yeah, it did. That, was, that may have been the trade for the day there, right on that one. Let's see if that how that looked on a one-minute chart. A one-minute chart, it came in, closed below, came up, retested the wedge, and that gave us the opportunity on that one. Can't catch them all. Can't look at them all at the same time. Well, yeah, it's not Pokemon. You can't catch them all. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> well, this one still looks like it may still pan out for us. So I wasn't too keen on trading the cat anyway with the announcement uh, at 10 o'clock, which is another hour and 10 minutes away. I have a vested interest. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that UCAD was nice, though. Well, I grabbed four pips anyway. Not a lot, but still a gain. I have already got, I think, until the nine or ten pips today with that U Chef break. Good. Oh, you have your daily bread then. Yeah. Bon appetit. <laughs> yeah, bon appetit. Bon appetit. Here we go. There's what we're looking for right there. Uh, no should have waited. No, you shouldn't have. You got. You took your profit. There's our seven pips on the first trade. I'm going to take that one off. 
Oh, wow. It's going, better. it's going even better yet. There's one. There's another one. one. I'm out. I'm trying to get out of this last one here. There we go. I'm out. Well, that worked out nicely. Right up into our supply zone. How much pips did you catch on that? Oh, uh, I caught uh, more than well, seven, I, I suppose. I, I broke even on my on my loss for the day. So the other one, I actually had two different trades on that one. I actually just see. grabbed nine on the U.S. CAD. Nice. Yeah, it just and it's still going down. Aussie is going up like, wow. <laughs> that was quite the breakout. It's must 20 been, pips almost. Must have been some sort of news on that. 20 pips, uh, 17 pips counting from that B. Nice. Well, the common denominator between the two trades is the U.S. dollar. The U.S. got really weak all of a sudden. I wonder what happened. Oh, news, political news probably. Yeah, because the same bar that you have uh, blue on the Aussie US, the uh, US CAD has red, uh, well, candle, not bar. It's the same thing. They both kind of blew out at the same time in a major way. Yeah, Euro USD just took an insane move. Did it? Yeah, like insane. So it just uh, stomped on the U.S. today, did it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a big move. That thirty-minute candle is seventy-five. No, nah, fifty pips. Wow. So it's like it's gone up seventy-five pips, like straight up. Wow. No retracement or nothing. Not even a, I don't know. It doesn't even look like it pulled back even 10%. Let me take this off. You can look at a 15-minute chart. You see it came right on up into this little zone right here, which is where we drew it. And actually came, here's the, if we said if it closed above this candle, then we'd be looking at, basically this is the, this candle right here, this red candle is, and it just whipped right up above that. And that was probably about a spread's worth. 72.66 to 72.64, yeah, roughly two pips. So basically there was some sellers, some buyers that uh, got filled there and some sellers that sold up there, just enough to cover the spread. And now it's pulling right back into the zone. So once it breaks this, the next stop on the train would be, I would say is gonna be uh, you have a few little wicks in here, but here's going to be the next big stop on the train if it decides to keep on going. I'll be putting it on up to around this area. We have this strong blue candle up here, came back down. We got the close test at the bottom of this candle right in this area. Here's the zone. and But this is the uh, I say I would have to say looking at realistically I'd be looking at probably this candle right here and then using this for the top. This would be the next supply zone. If it can break through this, I would say this is the area is gonna be coming. Probably check out this this red candle right here. But here's the start of this move down here where it got this blue candle right here, the red candle, and then you don't see any more blue until you come back to the retest, which is where we just came through. It retested this area and now it's coming back to see if they want to take any more run out of it. That was a nice little trade there. That was We had no idea that was coming, but I did say, like I said, if it broke the B, and it was struggling right in here, it was struggling to break that B, that B zone. I said, once it broke it, this was the next stop in the train. 
And that takes care of that trade. That one's done. Any questions about that? How did everybody do on that one? Anybody? Well, I grabbed 13 pips on that move, but with uh, paired with the Canadian. Oh, good. Well, I did get my daily bread on. Uh, the one account I have, I said I trade two accounts. The one account I'm still showing a little bit negative because I took a stop out earlier off that U.S. WIS. Uh, but I made it all up on the other account, so I'm still profitable for the day with my daily bread. Perfect. So I'm done. So let's take a look and see where the Canadian uh, ended up here. And it's almost 9 o'clock, so we have about another, no, we have another 30 minutes here still. Here's our Canadian trade. Let's take a look at that, see how, we drew, how that played out for us, even though we may have not been watching it. And let's take a look at the five-minute chart here. Here's where we had the wedge. Here's the, we had the wedge alert, and we drew the wedge. Still waiting for this. Remember, I said we were. I like to see three hits. So here was the, the anchor. Here was the first hit. I didn't get the confirmation until over here. That allowed me to move my. That allowed me to move my D over to this area. So that's validated this trend line. This one already had the. Uh, this one wasn't validated yet either. So we had the A, the C. Um, but it broke. We had our zone right here. And I always say that if it, I want to see it close inside this area. Preferably, I think to see this candle, this blue candle was a little bit of a problem, but you can see where this came down. It did close in, came back to retest it, and then we, then it just fell off the cliff. Pretty much the same time the Aussie did. So it must have had some U.S. news that, uh, the markets didn't didn't care for. And I think we would have had our I don't think we've had any trouble getting our seven pips out of this. From this candle close if say you took it on that one, your retracement would have been may have been right at your seven pips. If you probably want to keep it above, I would have given that ten at least. I've been giving mine pretty much ten to twelve pips anymore. And then the target down here was twenty three. You well you got you have gotten easily you've gotten your fifteen or twenty pips out of this one. And it's still going. So that one's done. Anything else any new alerts? We have a couple more about three more minutes we may get another one here. This was a problem child here, the six forty, this one at on the US Swiss this morning, that was the problem one. And what it did was it came right up into this supply zone that I drew off the wedge yesterday. Uh, let's kind of go talk about this one a little bit. We had a, a nice wedge yesterday. This was came in at a fit, three o'clock yesterday afternoon. I drew the wedge, but when I did this, let me just take all this stuff off. We're just going to go through this one. This was a good example to. Uh, this was a good one to uh, learn from, I guess you could say. It's like I had all my my plan. I had my plan all in check, and then I didn't follow my plan because it was a new day and I wasn't thinking basically but I had this we had this nice wedge area yesterday and I said basically I looked at the range up here and so I drew the Fibonacci retracement from the B to the C this is straight Fibonacci's and so I said okay it's trading this is a pretty good range from the B to the D range oh where's my look at this from here to here, that's 45 pips. So that's a nice little range. And you can see right here in the mid, mid zone, I actually drew a, a mid range right into this area because this is where the price is kept hanging out in this area. From here, here's the 38%, here's the 61.8% retracement. And I have this as a mid-range. So as it was, and this was yesterday afternoon, it was just going sideways. And they came up and they retested this area, pulled back. Then we had the alert this morning. I still had this upper 25% zone, lower 25% zone. I used that for my dip supply and demand zone. And I even had this set so that if it came in and closed inside this range, which is where... 
Let me pull this up a little bit here. I'm gonna lock on that. Let me unlock this. So the B was still valid. And the D was valid. And I said, if we had an entry in, into this, I was going to not enter it long, but wait till it comes up in here to enter it short uh, because it's right up here in the supply zone. And if it broke, I would, if I took it short up here, I wouldn't have lost too many pips. So if it broke to the upside, well, it came right up in here this morning after the alert, it came right up into that zone. And I took a long thing and it was going to be breaking up because I was looking at the enter to, usually we enter to go long in that zone as we do down below here. But the fact we have a supply zone right there is made more sense to actually enter it when it broke the wedge and came up into here for the head fake to take it short, which is exactly what it did. So, but I took it long, it got stopped out. And you can see right now it's coming right down into this area. But it broke all the way through this zone. So the, right now this demand zone is, uh, this was broken but well, we, again, we don't have the close yet. On this 15 minute, we don't have a close. Let's see, we have one a five minute. I still hesitate taking this thing uh, short right now because we don't have the close in here. Five minutes still, this zone, it was a, this is sort of like a head fake. It came in, couldn't close into this, enter to close zone. In the one minute, it, uh, did it close in here? We did get a one minute close in here, but we didn't get the five minute close. So right now this thing's building a little bit of a wedge right in here. We look on a one minute chart. So this the band zone has been breached. It's strong move down, low flag pattern here, a little wedge. And now the question is, is it going to keep on going? We did get the close on the one minute, we didn't get it on the five minute. I think there's probably a good chance it's going to keep on going down. I'll say this one's closed. This one has been breached. So now we're looking at a small little wedge right in here. I'm not going to take this, but I may take it on a demo and see how it works. And so we're going to draw this. We have a low, we have a high. We don't know where the low is going to be, but right now it's uh, pulling back to, let's just say, then we draw the wedge. I would probably like to see that third hit. This is pretty much what we have on this one right now. It's still it's back up in the demand zone. But was once It'll step away is, for about five minutes. I'll be right back. Okay. What was once demand is now supply. It got broken. Right now, all the trades that we had that we had alerts on, they're all pretty much done for right now. We can maybe get some more out of it possibly if you choose to. But if you, ideally you try and catch the move, get your, get in, get out, take your money and then have a, have a day, have a life. Or just take your time practicing and practicing and practicing. Each Panda made a comment that it's approaching yesterday's low. I actually have a little bit, uh, the US Swiss uh, uh, I'm assuming so because let's see, uh, let's see where let's see where it is on the higher time frame here. Uh, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, yeah, that'd be well, actually, yeah, this would be yesterday's. Yeah, that's correct. That's exactly right. And actually, here we could be almost looking at this area. Well, there's there's nothing over here really. Um, Let's take a look on a higher, let's say, let me just take all this stuff off and let's kind of redraw this again, see where we're at with this thing. Let's go right. to a little higher time frame. 
Uh, excuse me, Al Rajiv has uh, said, can you go back to the top of the wedge where you entered to go long? On your left side, there are a lot of wicks suggesting a supply zone. Would you take that into consideration for going long on the U.S. Swiss? Uh, over here on the left-hand side, uh, about what time frame are you talking there, uh, Rajiv? Rajiv, what time, time frame is it? Here, I can turn your mic on if you have a mic, Rajiv. Maybe you can you where are you at? yeah you're free to talk if you have your mic. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was wondering, like, is it on? I think 15 minutes. We were just observing that chart when you were explaining. Okay, it says to the, here's a 15 minute chart. The one which is, which you stopped out. Oh, the one I got stopped out on. That was up here. I got stopped out up here. I guess I went. Uh, we had the alert at uh, 6:45. Yeah, you know, let's kind of be sh I'll just kind of show you what we what I did with that one. We had alert at six forty five this morning. Let me get this thing here. Uh, let's see, this is the I'm trying to find my reference here. So, well, I'll just make it yellow here. Sometimes my charts don't always overlay the same as they as they should. Okay, so here's where the alert was this morning on the 15-minute chart. It was ascending, so it, technically you could probably go all the way back to here. Here's it because we're looking to go low to high. We have a high up here, and we have a higher low. We have a lower high, and there's our wet. There's the wedge for the. And this was actually the same area that we were drawn from yesterday. This is actually yesterday's high and low. Here's a new day from where the blue line is. That's a new day. So what I did was I was looking at these wicks up here and I was looking at these wicks down below. So this was the range. And I thought to myself that if I draw a range, see where the supply was. So if we're looking up, up here, all the way down to here. This is our basically our straight Fibonacci range that we're looking at. And right. here's the bottom 25%. So from this area, inside this blue area, we're just and we're gonna draw the lower 25%. This is from the 23.6 to zero. And then the 76 to four. So this is uh, demand. This is where all the uh, buyers are, are at on this in this range. This is where the buyers came in, took it on up to this range. So then we take another and we take from this area over. This is the top 25% of the range. This is our supply. And then we say, okay, so that if it's if we get a wedge alert right here and Normally, what we would be doing, let's just take this off. We don't need these anymore. And so we're looking at the wedge and we're saying, okay, here's a hit. Here's our anchor. Here's our hit. We actually had the other hit after the alert. So you could actually probably even come over to this area right here. Now, here's here's where I drew the wedge, but here's where the, this is, and this was a fair, whoops, from the top. That's our primary area. But you can see where it broke. Normally I would have it, if, if I wouldn't see it close above the D area with my enter to close, close on the entry, which would be right in, and actually when I draw it right now, it's actually, um, let me think, what did, what, what happened here on this? I think what happened with this was Get this up a little bit higher here. Yeah, that's this is where it was. So we had the alert. Here is my my first high. Here's the here's my little my little zone right in there. Oh, this is on 15 minutes. Let me get on the lower time frame. See what we see if we can tweak this somewhat. This should be blue. Enter to on close. So I'm trying to find my enter to close zone right now is what I'm trying to draw here. Yeah, 
There's a peak. Okay, so here's the alert. Here's the, now we did have this, I was able to take this over this D. I was able to tuck this in because here's where the alert was. It's, and it gave me my third hit. So here's my, my anchors up back here. Here's my anchor. It came in, here's our intermediate hit. And then here's the third hit. And then it broke, and then it broke. So my third hit, so my zone is gonna be from here to the top in here. And I said, okay, so this is my enter to sell zone. What well, came on up, it closed. Actually, did it close? Yeah, it closed on this. It closed right on this candle right in here, but it closed. But see where it closed right into this big supply zone, and that's where my mistake was. Is that I, we were, it was coming right up into where there was strong supply from yesterday, and it. I mean, there was enough room there if it penetrated the zone deeper. It could have is ninety two oh one to ninety two. Let's see, eleven pips. Time. Eleven pips. Is that what it is? Yeah, about 11 pips. So there's not a lot of room to actually, I mean, it would have to go pretty deep into this area to be able to get that. And so it gave me a little bit of head fake. I mean, I think the way I had it, well, this one minute, if I can on one minute candle here. You see this, because here was the alert. It closed inside that. So, okay, it closed inside, but it's right inside this demand zone, this supply zone. And that's where the mistake, and then it came right back and just took me right out. See, um, if you go on 15 minute and if you look at um, the top of the wedge on the left, the one where we have uh, your B is. Yeah. So would you consider, because it's quite wicky out there. So would you consider these wicks as a potential threat to that? Yes, target which you Ab have? absolutely, absolutely. In and fact, it, it it probably would have made uh, would have made just as much sense to move this thing down to here, and then have this one over here that have a pretty much of a flat top, and then I could have, then I would have done something like this, given this a little bit bigger area, and then I wouldn't have even been it wouldn't have even been breached. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, but I was only uh, trying to make sure that when we were taking like. Your strike rate is pretty good, 65 to 75 percent. Um, you're already doing well. The only thing is, how can we do better than this? Um, <laughs> Get luckier, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, it's. Uh, I mean, there's, there's different ways of. I mean, there's always some little thing that maybe you can take and file away in your bank of uh, knowledge to say that. Uh, you know, because really, when you think about it, when this thing, if it breaks in here and you have this strong of a zone from especially a day before, right. uh, I mean, it it could just blow right through it, too. I mean, it made this high yesterday and it could have just blown right through it uh, very easily. But the odds, but the thing is, you know, you're going to have some heat. You're going to take some heat in here. And that's the only thing I say, even like down here, when this thing broke in, right into this demand zone, I mean, this one just blew right through it. But who's to say right. that it would have done it up here either? But just know that there that these zones are here, and um, and just kind of take it from from that. You know, that's all I can say. I mean, you're not like I say, you're not going to be able to read them all 100%. The market's going to give you, uh, you know, some head fakes and things like that. You just have to, you, know, you 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 have a method. You take them all. You take all the ones that give you the uh, fit your criteria, and just keep your, your stop small. If, if you're still winning 65% uh, of your trades. Uh, two to one, uh, you're still going to be way ahead of the game. Even right, one to one, right. you'll be ahead of the game. So, like, so you're not going to get them all. Uh, th this this theory worked up here; it wouldn't have worked down here. And then you have to look and say, right, okay, yeah. well, so then you say, well, where are my moving averages on the 15? And you say, okay, it came on up. This thing's already peaked up here. And so, if this thing's peaked, and if you look at, let's just mark. We'll just mark where this alert came in. So right now on the 15 minute, these are a size we're, we're peaking. This one's already peaked and he had the hook. But the eight was still coming out of the 60. So that means a lot of times it'll come down and it'll hook again. Maybe the thing to have done was to wait for it to hook. And if you go to your one minute chart where that same price point is, you can see where here's where the alert was. 
the one minute it came up and hooked, came down and hooked again. So I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe this thing's going to break through. But now you had a little bit, now you may have had some divergence here on your five minute. Now here's the, and this is what I didn't see. I didn't see this until just now this minute. Here's your high. Here's a higher high. Here's a high. Here's a lower high. There's your divergence. This is five minute divergence right here. You had your high here. And you have, and it's, it's, it's good to keep looking for that. So here's, so you have uh, template divergence, should have divergence in here somewhere. Oh, where to go? Oh. I'll just do it this way. So here's your, there's a, there's a high, here's a higher high. Come down here to your RSIs, and here's a high, and here's a lower high. There's your divergence. Not much. That's on a one minute chart. Let's look at it at the 50, on the five minute chart. Um, I don't really see it much on the five minute. So what is the inference we draw when we have a divergence like this? Say that again. Sorry, what is the inference we draw out of this, especially when we have a divergence like this? Well, what it really, what it really means is that you've got the price has, the price breaks new highs, but the strength of that move is lower. Right. So you basically you're having. So what's what's happening is you you're not getting the, you're not getting the volume. You're getting the, the the price action. You're getting the price action, but you're not getting the strength of the move. So it's that that's usually an indication where the institutions are driving the price up to an area, and you don't have the follow through with the with the price with the with the strength. But they, they and they're doing they're getting everybody sucked into it, and then they're then they're dropping the price. Right. It just has just weaker strength with a higher price. Or you have a, uh, let's see if we have a divergence over here someplace. We have a, yeah, this one almost here. We have, let me just take this off. We have, we have a low here. And this is on a five minute. We have a lower low. And then you come right down here and look and see where the low was here. And you see, this is pretty much an equal, but if, it, if let's say it would have been, let's say this pullback would have been up a little bit higher than it was, then you could have had a low with a higher low with a lower price. That would have been divergence. Right. Try to see if I can find it. But, and there, those are key turning points. Oftentimes those are key turning points. So if, if say, say we look at this, like as you suggested that, uh, uh, a lower, there's a it's low, and then there's a higher low. Yes, as, oh, down as here, it, down here. here. So if we see that it's a higher low, so is it something we should be looking at probably going? Yeah, wrong? it's it's something you you especially when you see these big moves like that, you start looking for the, looking for that divergence. Um, I said the higher the time frame, the more valuable that information is. Uh, let me just see if I can find one here. This is not showing it too much. Uh, let's try a different chart. Let's see if I can find a better example for you. It's one of those things that's kind of always in the back of my mind, but it's... Uh, uh, see this. See this is, a, a, this is a low, and this is a higher low, and this is a higher low. So that's in sync with what the normal price action is. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any divergence on any of these right now, but you understand what I'm talking about. No, I get that. What you're saying. Yeah. So, but I think the big key is is that when you get the wedge, when you draw your get your three points, wait for the breakout, 
make sure you try and get a, a point out where your middle head is, which is going to be in this case is right here. And you want to get a close inside that zone from where the, here's your anchor, here's your hit, here's your third hit. It breaks the wedge, get a close in there, and then take it. Right. Got it. So, and, that, and it seems to work out pretty well more often than not, let's just say that. It's not going to work, it's not going to work every time. But then you can use your RSI to give you a little bit of a clue. I said, you don't want to be take if it's, if your price is all the way up here at the top of the wedge and your RSIs are up here at the 89%, wait, try and wait for that hook and then have a hook again. And that's usually time to enter. Or you look at your moving averages to make sure all your moving averages are in the right direction. And a lot of times, like even like with this one, you'll see where the, you had the, Moving where the moving average is consolidated inside the wedge, uh, that's usually an indication that it's going to test the bottom of it. And a lot of times you can get that earlier entry. But you came if this is your third hit, you may expect a bounce. But what if if your third hit comes up and it gives you another consolidation to go short? Then that's oftentimes that's where this third hit, where this wedge part gets violated. Now, as you get your anchor, you have the hit. Let me just take this off so you can see that. You have the hit. You have your third hit, bounces off. Now, if it comes back through and breaks the wedge, now you're probably off to, off to the races because now this one's been violated. It's been validated with this one, but it's been violated over here, and that's when the, where the break comes. Over here, we have the anchor. We have a hit. We don't have the third hit yet. So I would have thought if this one bounced, it would have come up here to validate this one, and then if it pulled back and broke through, now you have now you have the run. It's like that extra pullback that this now becomes violated. But right, right now, this one hasn't been challenged. This one hasn't doesn't have the third challenge. So it's I mean it's still somewhere. This here's the anchor. Here would be your hit. Somewhere in here, this thing should be challenged again. Right. Just like over here. Here's the hit. Now this is over past where the alert was, but that's okay. Find that, find that bounce and then move it over and say, okay, there's my anchor. Here's my validation, broke. You're looking for that low here. You're looking for this area here and then you're looking for the close somewhere, in, break the wedge and have an area somewhere to close. I like to see it close below the nearest pivot low so we get actually a lower on this blue candle, the bottom of this blue candle. I like to see something break and close below that one. Right, right. Okay. Uh, so another question is like, uh, sorry. Um, so if you are taking, say, going long on this one, so what are we looking at, uh, especially RSI tool? RSI, uh, the RSI. I'd yeah. like to see that if it it comes to go long, I would want to see this thing pull back down below here. I don't want to go long when the, when it hooks at the top because that means it's already at the top of the move. It should be pulling back. If you right. if this thing to go like right now to go short right now you'd probably want to see it come up get this to come up and then hook somewhere in here or but wait for us to come up and then hook right we, we had the bounce if you took it short here the odds are this thing's going to come up and give you a little this little strength up here if you look at where it broke you see where it broke here but it came back up hooked again and now you have a little bit of, now you have a trend going from now these are, you actually have a little bit of a trend line going from here if it comes up and hooks again there's your entry right right okay got it hey al um I have to go to the pharmacy before it closes, so uh, okay. I won't make it until the end of the session, but I'll be back in 10 minutes. So oh, uh, just uh, we'll message me then. on Facebook or I don't know if you're okay. ready for the You got call. that. Uh, Eva gave you I that got link. the link from Eva. Okay, yeah. we'll just see you over there then when you get back. All right. See you. Okay. See you yeah. guys. Yeah. Bye. Later, right. Later, man. All right. So I don't see any more alerts. So any, we have about five more minutes. Any other questions of uh, what we do, how we do it? Uh, now's a good time to open your mics, and uh, we can raise your hand, and we'll open your mic. And if you want to ask away, we'll be happy to see what we can do for you.
It's been an interesting morning this morning. The, uh, like I said, we got, I had the one stop out with the Swiss, and the, there again, it was it stopped out because it was right up into that yesterday zone. Um, and I use it again, if you use the same theory here, you have, been, it, it blew right through this. This thing's gone. So this, was, this one's no longer in play anymore. Yeah. It seems like they were all pretty good only because the U.S. totally tanked again, like really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you were looking to draw in a zone, you can actually go from here now, this point here, up to here. This area is still valid, so you could actually maybe make this in the upper 25%. And you could take this to be the lower 25%. And now you have a new playground. Keep in mind where your middle, where the middle of this move is. It's right here in between your 38 and 61. Here's your 50% line of this. So you can put a, I, this is why the yesterday I actually drew another middle zone right in here between the uh, 38. And just keep, and this way it gives you an idea of where you are in the scheme, in the big picture to, um, you want, to stay, you, you want to stay out of taking trades in here because unless you have enough room to get up here, if, if you can get a wedge in here and there's enough room to the demand zone or the supply zone, well, then you can probably take it. But just know where you are in the scheme of things. And you know if you get a wedge down here in this area, it's either going to break and go, keep going lower, which you have to be looking to see where your next area is, which is going to be over here. So if I have this zone, now this is this is a Fibonacci zone, but that doesn't have anything to do with the price area. And so, but I'm looking to see where, here was the origin of the move before it came all the way up from here, it came all the way up here. This was the origin of the move. It had two nice blue candles, came back, retested the area, and then you can see where it followed that 62 moving average all the way up. So you could kind of tweak this a little bit and you could say, okay, if this thing comes down into above this area, because this is really the origin of the move. And this is and this wasn't, the lowest test of that was this uh, candle right here. This is the lowest test. So you can say, okay, this was the lowest wick before it came down to that zone. So this would be a target, this would be your target zone here. If it comes into here, there's probably a good chance it's gonna hook and come back up and retest probably the mid range. So you don't have to take every trade just because you have an alert doesn't mean you have to take every trade, but know where you are reference to at least reference to the day before the uh, the previous day's high and low. In this case, this was yesterday's. This is why we had this in this area right here. Yes, this was yesterday's. This was yesterday's range. Right here, and then this part was up in this area. And you can see there was an awful lot of price action. There's an awful lot of price action in, well, let me unlock this thing. There's a lot of price action right in this middle zone here, right between this 38 and 61% range. You can see that's where almost all your price action was yesterday afternoon. Once it, it just went, it was just went sideways and now, now it broke. That's broken, so now we have to go down to the next one. Just move it on down to where the previous zone was. And that's your new range, because this, this one's still held. This one held pretty strong. So you know when it comes back up here, you probably you may still have some more unfilled orders to go short up here. And this area got blown through, but you, you probably still have some buy orders down in here. And we're just going to take it down into this lower 25%. You can see, and you can see where the price came right on down and it's tagged it. Where's our Fibonacci tool here? That's right in the, where is that? It's, that's a 15 minute. Let's put it on a, let's do it on a five minute chart. And it's on 15 minute, on the five minute areas. And you can see right here, it came right down to this fib line. 
and it was rejected. Now that may come down, retest this area. If this is rejected, it could come all the way down to in here. But at least you know what you're working with in here. Okay. And so having said that, it's 930. And uh, thanks everybody for coming in. Hope everybody had a successful morning. We had a nice little trade on that Aussie US when it broke or the Canadian if you were in that one. U.S. Swiss uh, would have been profitable eventually, but it took a little while to, uh, but I, after I got stopped out with that, and uh, I just decided to let that one go because it wasn't, it wasn't playing the way I wanted it to play, so I just let it go and looked for another trade. So, again, thanks for coming in. We'll be, again, we're going to be here tonight at 9.30 uh, Eastern Time tonight. If anybody's up and wants to come on in, uh, please do. It's usually pretty slow trading that time because a lot of the alerts we get uh, take a couple hours to uh, develop, but they do work. But just matter if you, I usually don't take them myself because it's, they usually don't happen until the middle of the night, and I gotta get ready for the next morning. So anyway, <laughs> see, see everybody tomorrow. And what kind All of right. excuse is that, Al? <laughs> What's that? I said, what kind of excuse is that that you don't yeah. want to be up all night? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be up all night. Yeah. I, I do find that whenever I am in a trade and I am, I don't sleep very well when I'm in a trade. So yeah, I hear that, is you. The, that is the nature of the beast. So anyway, we'll see everybody tomorrow. Okay, see All right. You later. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Eva. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks, Matt. I